Blessed be God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. And blessed be his name in our Amen. Almighty God, to you all hearts are open, all desires known, and from you no secrets are hid. Cleanse the thoughts of our hearts by the inspiration of your Holy Spirit that we may perfectly love you and worthily magnify your holy name through Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen.
They brought in the heart of ark of the Lord and set it in its place inside the tent that David had pitched for. And David offered bread offerings and offerings of well being before the Lord. When David had finished offering the burnt offerings and the offerings of well being, he blessed the people in the name of the Lord of hosts and distributed food among all the people. The whole multitude of Israel, both men and women, to each a cake of bread, a portion of meat, and a cake of raisins. Then all the people went back to their homes. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. We will pray the psalm responsibly by half verse. The earth is the Lord's and all that is in it. The world and all who dwell therein. For it is he who founded it upon the seas. Who can ascend the hill of the Lord? Stand in his holy place. Those who have clean hands and a pure heart. Who have not placed themselves in falsehood, nor sworn by the of the cross. They shall receive a blessing from the Lord. Such is the generation of those who seek him. Those who seek your face, O God of Jacob. Lift up your heads, O gates. Lift them high, O everlasting doors. And the King of glory shall come in. Who is this King of glory? The Lord, strong and mighty. The Lord, mighty in battle. Lift up your heads, O gates. Lift them high, O everlasting doors. And the King of glory shall come in. Who is he, this King of glory? The Lord of hosts, he is the King of glory. Paul tells the disciples in Ephesus that when they respond to the gospel, they will know the power of the Holy Spirit. A reading from the letter of Paul to the Ephesians. Blessed be the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, who has blessed us in Christ with every spiritual blessing in the heavenly places, just as he chose us in Christ before the foundation of the world to be holy and blameless before him in love. He destined us for the adoption as his children through Jesus Christ, according to the good pleasure of his will. Through the praise of his glorious grace that he freely bestowed on us and the beloved. In him we have redemption through his blood, the forgiveness of our trespasses according to the riches of his grace that he lavished upon us. With all wisdom and insight, he has made known to us the mystery of his will, according to his good pleasure that he has set forth in Christ as a plan for the fullness of time to gather up all <coughs> things in heaven and things on earth. In Christ we have also obtained an inheritance, having been destined according to the purpose of him who accomplishes all things according to his counsel and will, so that we, who were the first to set our hope on Christ, might live for the praise of his glory. In him you also, when you have heard the word of the truth, the gospel of, of your salvation and have believed in or marked with the seal of the promised Holy Spirit. This is the pledge of our inheritance toward redemption as God's own people to the praise of his glory. The word of the Lord. Thanks. 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 Thanks.
for Jesus' name had become known. Some were saying, John the baptizer has been raised from the dead, and for this reason, these powers are at work in him. But others said, it is Elijah. And others said, it is a prophet like one of the prophets of old. But when Herod heard of it, he said, John, whom I beheaded, has been raised. For Herod himself had sent men who arrested John, found him, and put him in prison on account of Herodias, his brother Philip's wife, because Herod had married her. For John had been telling Herod, it is not lawful for you to have your brother's wife. And Herodias had a grudge against him and wanted to kill him. But she could not, for Herod feared John, knowing that he was a righteous and holy man, and he protected him. When he heard him, he was greatly perplexed, and yet he liked to listen to him. But an opportunity came when Herod on his birthday gave a banquet for his courtiers and officers and for the leaders of Galilee. When his daughter Herodias came in and danced, she pleased Herod and his guests. And the king said to the girl, ask me for whatever you wish and I will give you to you. And he solemnly swore to her, whatever you ask me, I will give you even half of my kingdom. She went out and said to her mother, what should I ask for? She replied, the head of John the baptizer. Immediately she rushed back to the king and requested, I want you to give me at once the head of John the Baptist on a platter. The king was deeply grieved. Yet out of regard for his oaths and for the guests, he did not want to refuse her. Immediately the king sent a soldier of the guard with orders to bring John's head. He went and beheaded him in the prison, brought his head on a platter, and gave it to the girl. Then the girl gave it to her mother. When his disciples heard about it, they came and took his body and laid it in the tomb. The Gospel of the Lord. cycle of readings 
that the gospel has nothing to do directly with Jesus. So here we have the situation of John the Baptist being arrested for telling the truth. John challenging Herod's illegitimate marriage to Herodias, his brother's sister and his brother's wife, even though his brother was still alive. And then appropriating to himself everything that Herodias brought into the relationship. Herod was the son of the King Herod the Great. Herod Antipas, as he's known, was a much lesser man than his father. He was basically a Roman puppet. And uh, he fashioned himself as a king. But he really wasn't. He did not have the title. He liked to try to live that way. But he was not liked by the Romans. He was tolerated. And most of his fellow Jews hated him. He was half, only half Jewish, too. He built his palace on the top of a pagan cemetery, which did not endear him to his fellow Jews at all, because that was considered blasphemous to have done something like that, even if it was a pagan cemetery. So that's the man who, at one point, feels so drawn by what John the Baptist preaches that it fascinates him and it causes him to think and it causes him to reflect on his own life and his conduct. But never enough to make a change. Never enough to convince him that he needed to set things right it didn't stop him from doing all kinds of other things that just showed that he was basically acting in a cruel and self-centered way to further his own ambitions and whatever ambitions his family might have had. So we see what happens. Herodias obviously had very great influence over Herod. And so she gets what she wants in this ghoulish way. What her daughter must have been thinking, who knows? What Herodias herself was thinking, or even Herod, we don't really know, except that Herod just couldn't bring himself to contradict what he had said. So all these guests get to visit, get to see this ghoulish sight of the platter brought in with the Baptist's head. And that was the end of that. So they were to be convinced that Herod was the great, as great as his father, as great a leader who was fulfilling the promises that he made even if it was in this kind of horrible way. So often, people who are leaders, people who have authority and power, know how to use that authority and power for their own ends, rather than for the reason that it was given. In the first lesson today, David is, of course, celebrating this moment of recovering the Ark of the Covenant that the Philistines had captured because their fortunes had gone up and down. Saul and Jonathan had died in battle against the Philistines. So many years before, David had achieved victory in that one instance where he killed Goliath using his slingshot. But since then, their fortunes had gone pretty badly against the Philistines. 
And when the Philistines took the ark, things just went from bad to worse for the Jews. For at that time, they've been known as the Hebrews. So when they get it back, David is just ecstatic, and we see that he and all these other of his court are dancing practically in ecstasy because now they've got it back and they're celebrating the presence of God who is represented by what's in the ark and the invisible presence of God sitting on top of the ark. <clears throat> but Saul's daughter, his wife, despises him, it says. Never once do we hear that David loved his wife. She loved him. But he never says anything, nothing is ever said in the scripture that he loved her. After all, Saul had decided that because David had done all these great things, that he would give Michael to him as his wife. And in the meantime, David accumulated a few more wives, a few more concubines, and began to continue to think of himself not just as this one who was specially blessed, but one who could do no wrong. He became full of himself. And we know that in David's history, there comes the point where he's willing to commit murder in order to have what he wants. When he contrives to take Bathsheba away from Uriah, her husband, and have Uriah killed in battle so that he could take her, and since she was pregnant with his baby, that he could cover his tracks. Eventually, he's found out. But all through David's history, there, goes, there are moments when he is just as pious as he can be, as definite about a Yahweh and Yahweh's law as he can be. But as he grows older and gets more full of himself, he tends to forget and he thinks that he really is the greatest thing to come along ever in the history of the people. And to think that David was probably the best king all the line of kings, he was probably the best one they ever had. That's why God eventually gave up on the monarchy among his people. <clears throat> so what does this have to do with anything else? It's easy for us at times to think of ourselves as better than everybody else because of our education, perhaps because of our financial situation, perhaps because you know, we just are naturally uh, able to move into positions of leadership, because we're able to do a variety of things. We've got the right education that enables us or has enabled us to get to where we are today. And in and of themselves, those things are, are fine. But it's when we begin to think that it gives us a sense of superiority over everybody else. And of course, one of the things that we have to struggle with is at times the idea that we are superior, perhaps because of who we are, our ancestry, our skin color, or whatever it might be. And we have to be honest because we're disciples of Jesus that what makes us ultimately great and special is not any of those other things. Those are reflections of the gifts of God to us. However, what is true is what we hear in the second lesson today. In the letter to the Ephesians, where Paul reminds you and me that we have been blessed in Christ with every spiritual blessing in the heavenly places and that he has chosen us
just as he chose Christ before the foundation of the world, to be holy and blameless before him in love. He destined us for adoption as his children through Jesus Christ, according to the good pleasure of his will, to the praise of his glorious grace that he freely bestowed on us in the beloved. So, we all have things in our lives that we can point to, that we know, that have given us a certain sense of ourselves, our importance, our specialness. But the most important thing is that we, before the world was begun, have been called in Christ, <coughs> called by the Eternal Father, in Christ the Creator, to be His holy people. Just think about it. from all eternity, God called you and me before any of our families existed, before any of us would ever see the light of day. We were called and made heirs of Christ and called to this life in union with him through our baptism by the gift of the Holy Spirit. And that's what makes us special. That's what makes us different. That's what makes us people who have a place that we are going to go someday, hopefully. But in the meantime, it's the call that we have to carry out all kinds of things that we are asked to do. The loving, the caring, the forgiving, the generosity, the compassion, all those things that I say all the time. All of that is the basic and necessary mission that's been entrusted to us. Because we are blessed in that one. We have different gifts. We have different talents. We have different places of origin from different races, etc., etc. But what we have in common is God's call. Some of us accept it and try to live it. Others who have the same call, perhaps have rejected it, turned away from it, decided that it wasn't for them, but it doesn't change God's mind towards them any more than when we fall short that God's mind towards us has changed. So it's good for us to remember that one of the reasons we're here this morning is because we've been called here we chose to come today. We did what we needed to do to be here today. But it's the one who created us in the first place, who has called us and blessed us, who has made us the holy ones here. And that's why we're here today, to proclaim Christ as our Lord, to give thanks for the identity and the life and the gifts that are ours, and also to ask for the strength to never forget whose we are and who we are. And to know that no matter how much we accomplish in this life, no matter where we find ourselves, it's ultimately what the Christ, what Christ has given to you and to me. God's call to us to be his holy ones that matters the most. We get too full of ourselves and think that we've managed to do all of this. We're always going to have a moment to be reminded that we may have accomplished a lot, but we wouldn't be anywhere without the basic gift of life and love that has made it possible for us to grow and to be what God has called us to be, what he has gifted us to be, and what he 
expects us to continue to become until the last moment when he calls us to himself. John the Baptist was not a man full of himself. He was a man who, in imitation of the Lord, to whom he was the last and greatest witness, was self-emptying, knew that the risks were great if he spoke the truth, had his life abruptly ended, but knew that the mission that he had been entrusted with, that he had fulfilled, and his words in the scriptures continue to come down to us. Whatever Herod said way back when is lost to us. So in our Eucharist today, we give thanks to the one who has given us all things, the one who loves us, and the one who will never, ever fail us. Let us now profess our faith in the words of the Nicene Creed. We believe in one God, the Father, the Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all that is seen and unseen. We believe in one Lord, Jesus Christ, the only Son of God, the only God and the Father, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten not made of one being with the Father, through him all things were made. For us and for our salvation, he came down from heaven. By the power of the Holy Spirit, he became incarnate of the Virgin Mary and the was made man. For our sake, he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried. On the third day, he rose again in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. We believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord and giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son. With the Father and the Son, he is worshipped and glorified. He has spoken through our minds. We believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church. We acknowledge one baptism for the forgiveness of sins. We will look for the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. <clears throat> to the one from whom all life and goodness come, we raise our minds and hearts in supplication for the church, the world, and for all in need. O oh God, we pray for the church, that we may reflect your love, your power, and your will in our relationships with each other and the world, especially Justin and Sam Gary, Michael Lester, the Sergeant Bishop, all our bishops of us, Michael Lester, the Philippine Episcopal Church, its primates, Bishop, faithful, and clergy, the ministries and congregations in the Marxist community, Grace Place and the Nineties, Holy Trinity and Belvedere, St. Paul the Cal, St. Luke Dixon, Grace Freeport, St. Andrews in the Fields Farm Ridge, and our companion diocese of Rink South Sudan, Saint, uh, for St. Michael Paul, and Southeast Mexico for French Confederation Oaxaca. That you would kindle in us all your vision for the world. Hear us, O Lord. Your mercy is great. For those in authority around the world, especially for our president, that they may serve their people well, putting the welfare of their people before their own needs and desires, and give us grace to be good citizens and neighbors. Hear us, Lord. Your mercy is great. For those who are ill, anxious, or forgotten, for those who have asked for our prayers, and for those who have no one to pray for them, for all on our intercessory prayer list, for whose names are found in today's bulletin of the attention list, and any we may wish to remember now. Hear us, Lord. Your mercy is great. 
His grace. For those who are being born into life in this world, for all being baptized into the life of grace, and for Father Dark the Pitcher, James Mitchell, and Thomas McGovern, Lisa Yackley, Laura Lowe, Helen Brown, and Louisa Brooks, and all those passing or who have passed into eternal life, especially those for whom we now pray. Hear us, Lord, and hear us, Lord, and hear us, Lord, for the safety of travelers, especially from our parents and families, for those celebrating birthdays this week, particularly Sunday Vanderbeer, Kurt Bathis, Dan Kirkpatrick, Lisa Rossiti, and Judy, Judy Mons, and for Dan and Ted Huff, for celebrating their wedding anniversary this week, that the Lord will enfold them all in his loving grace, protection, strength, and mercy. Hear us, Lord. Your mercy is great. <clears throat> Let us now offer the prayer for the mission of our parish. Loving God, through your grace, guide us, the people of Calvary Episcopal Church, to joyfully carry out our mission of growing faith in your Son, Jesus Christ. Fill us with your Holy Spirit that we may develop the living faith that deepens our understanding of you and strengthens our awareness of the needs of others. May we be a transforming light within our parish and within the community. All this we ask in the name of your Son, our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Amen. Let us confess our sins against God and our neighbor. Most merciful God, we confess that we have sinned against you in the thought, word, and deed by what we have done and by what we have done.
lesson on Sundays. So if you're interested, please contact the parish office. And uh, <clears throat> in case you're wondering why everything looks a little strange, it's because I haven't put the bulletin together this week. So uh, the anniversary and birthday brigade updates. Uh, as we work to update our parish family database, uh, we have sent out a review sheet of current information. Um, it's been sent out, and what we would like is if you have received that, if you would please fill it out and send it back as soon as possible so that we can uh, update our directory so that we have proper email, proper phone numbers, proper addresses. <clears throat> Uh, I just would like to remind those who are at home also uh, that if you plan on receiving communion via drive-through today, please text me so that I know what time you're going to come. And if possible, please don't wait to the last minute to let me know. Um, tomorrow evening, Vestry will meet, and I uh, made a mistake. Did these announcements before I got the final uh, word. Vestry will meet virtually tomorrow evening and not in person. And then there's all the Christian Ed educate, uh, information there from Susan. So I leave that to your uh, attention. Are there any other announcements from anyone here in church? or via Zoom, any announcements? Okay. <clears throat> so, the offertory prayer then, I invite you to pray together with me on page 16 of the bulletin. <clears throat> Lord, look kindly on us as we prepare your table, and grant to us who gather here an increase of holiness and grace through Jesus Christ our Lord.
chose John the Baptist to be the herald and forerunner of Christ. You gave him the honor of baptizing Jesus in the Jordan and announcing him as the Lamb who by dying would take away our sins. You found John worthy of accepting baptism in his own blood by dying a martyr's death to complete his witness to your son. Therefore, with angels and archangels and those who worship you in every age, we raise our voices in joyful praise to proclaim the glory of your name.
offering you praise and thanksgiving for creation and all the blessings of his life, for the redemption won for us by your life, death, and resurrection, for the means of grace and hope and glory, and particularly for the blessings given to you. I believe that you are truly present in the Holy Sacrament, and since I cannot at this time receive communion, I pray you come into my heart. I unite myself with you and embrace you with all my heart, my soul, and my mind. Let nothing separate me from you. Let me serve you in this life until by your grace I come to your glorious kingdom in unending peace. Come, Lord Jesus. And dwell in my heart in the fullness of your strength. Be my wisdom and guide me in right pathways. Conform my life and actions to the image of your holiness. And in the power of your gracious mind, rule over every hostile power that threatens or disturbs the growth of your kingdom, who with the Father and the Holy Spirit lives and reigns, one God in glory everlasting. Amen. <laughs> The gifts of God for the people of God. Take them in remembrance that Christ died for you and feed on him in your hearts by faith with thanksgiving. <clears throat> Thank you. 
receiving these holy gifts, we pray to you, Father, that each time that we celebrate this mystery, the work of your salvation may grow within us through Jesus Christ our Lord. 